Now, Struts has a fairly complex architecture, but I think it can be broken down pretty simply because there's a lot of the architecture of Struts that we can ignore at first. We can look at this at a very high level, and then we can zoom into the parts that we need to. So looking at this diagram here, we're looking at a high level view of the Struts architecture. We're ignoring quite a few things that can happen in quite a few steps here, but we're looking at the main things that are gonna happen in the Struts application or an application that's using the Struts framework. Typically, you're going to start off with a request, and that request is going to go to what's called a filter dispatcher. And all that this thing does is it basically says, okay, for the given request that you've given me, what do I map this to, or what's going to handle this request? And what that's going to be is an action. And the action inside of Struts is going to do something. It's going to go back into your business logic, and it's going to perhaps manipulate some object there, or query for some data. Whatever it does, it's going to come back with some kind of a result. And now that result it can be a JSP page, in a lot of cases it is, but it doesn't have to be. It can basically be anything that ends up rendering some HTML. So you can think of the result as a template as well, because JSP is really a template, or you could use some other templating technology that's supported by struts. Once you have that result, then that result is going to be returned as a response to the user. And we had talked about an example of how this works with our MVC overview. And it's basically the same idea. You can see here where you could draw the lines for an MVC architecture, and you could see where you have certain things that are gonna behave as the model, where the view is being the result, and the controller is kind of that filter dispatcher and action combined together here. So this is a basic high level architecture. Any request that comes in to your web application from Struts is gonna pass through this type of sequence. Now let's look at a more concrete example and let's look at some of the things that we ignored. This is basically how Struts works to do what we had said before. So you might have a request here that is localhost my app slash hello. And what's going to happen with that request is that it is going to be sent to the web server. So you have an app container in Java, you have something that's hosting your application. And that's, we're going to call that our app container. And that thing that's hosting your application is going to have some configuration. In Java, we use this web.xml file to configure our app. And inside there, it's going to say what to do with a particular URL. Well, when we configure struts, we're going to tell it in our web XML that anything that comes in, you just send it to the struts filter dispatcher. So based on that, it's going to then take that request and that URL, it's going to send it to that filter dispatcher. And that filter dispatcher uses either two things here. It either uses a struts.xml file that you can see here, or it uses some other form of configuration, perhaps a convention-based configuration. For now, we're going to look at the case of it using the struts.xml. So here we can define and we can say how things are mapped. So we can say for this hello part of the URL, it's going to map to a hello action, and here's what this Java class is. So that's how that connection is made there. And so that filter dispatcher is going to say, okay, because your URL says my app slash hello, I'm going to go to my app application, and then I'm going to go and see what hello is mapped to. Oh, it's mapped to this hello action class. So I'm going to then call execute or a particular method if you've said one on this hello action class, and then it's going to process that request. So then hello action is gonna gain control and it's going to basically execute some of your business logic or whatever you need to do to properly handle the request that came through. And part of doing that, it may use the value stack to store some intermediate data. So for example, Let's say that inside of your request, it contained an ID parameter. Well, it might put that on the value stack so that it can access that data. And then finally, that action, that hello action, is going to be defined, it's going to be mapped in that same struts.xml file to some kind of result. 
And there's other ways of, of mapping this besides using the struts XML. We can use configuration, we can use convention based mapping as well there. But the basic idea is that it's going to have an action mapped to a particular result. And in this case, let's say that we had our hello.jsp file was what was going to be used to render that result. So it might get its data from the value stack, whatever hello action left there to be rendered by the view. And then it's going to render this view as HTML. And that's the basic idea here. And there's a lot of pieces in here where we could plug different things in, where we could do some different things and basically add some steps to here and we can swap out all of these different components. But this is the basic flow of how this works. And you can see that there's two points here where things are somewhat disconnected. And that's between when a request comes in, what handles it? That's, that's a, a flexibility point. It's defined in that struts of XML. And then the second part of that is, is when an action is done executing, what handles the result or what renders the view. And that's that other flexibility point. That's where we had to find our hello.jsp, but you could define something else there. And we'll get into this a little bit more as we get into the app, but I just wanted to give you a big overview of how exactly that the struts architecture works in order to separate this view from the model.